Welcome to our review on floating and sinking. Hopefully we remember from our key stage three work that items will float when up thrust balances the weight. Remember weight is the one acting in a downwards fashion, whereas up thrust acts against it, it's directly opposite. When we come on to the actual calculations, we've got to memorize this formula. So pressure is force divided by area. Hopefully this is one that you learned all the way back in key stage three. If not, make sure you know it now. So pressure is force divided by area. To give you an example of the kind of question you could be asked, there's one here for you. A tanker has a mass of 20 million kilograms. The area in contact with the water is 20,000 meters squared. Estimate the depth at which the ship floats. Density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed and gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. First thing to do in any calculation question is to highlight, underline, circle or jot down the key numbers from the question itself so you don't have to keep rereading it all over again. So once we've done that, which I've done in red in the question there, we then need to start our calculation. And the first thing we need to do is to calculate the weight. Hopefully we remember weight is a force and we calculate it by doing the mass times gravitational field strength or G. So we know that the mass is 20 million kilograms. We know gravitational field strength is 10. So 20 million times 10 gives us 200 million newtons as our force of weight. The next thing to do is have a look and see what we've got and what we need to work out. Now, in this case, we don't have everything to just use one of our formulae. We need to use two. So we've got pressure is depth times density times gravitational field strength, and force is pressure times area. But what we do know is we can merge these two together. Because if we obviously know that our pressure is depth times density times gravitational field strength, then we can substitute that in for the word pressure in our force. So the force is the depth times density times gravitational field strength times the area. So all we've done there is we've taken something we don't know because we don't know pressure, it's not given to us there, but we know we can work out pressure by doing depth times density times G. And then we've merged those into the one equation. So force is depth times density times gravitational field strength times area. Next thing we need to do is a bit of rearranging because remember we need to work out the depth from our question. So to rearrange that equation gives us depth is the weight divided by density times G times the area. We can then substitute in our values. The weight we worked out originally as 20 million and then we divide that by the density which is 1000 times by gravitational field strength which is 10 times by the area 20,000 meters. So that then gives us our total answer of one meter. When we're then considering the question of why is it that some objects float and others sink, then we also come into the idea that we can change the depth at which certain things float and sink. So we already know that an object will float if up thrust equals the weight. If we, however, wanted something to float at a different depth, we can achieve that. And that's what we see in things like a submarine, because we can actually make that submarine float on the surface of the water or at any depth further down in the water. And the way that we achieve this is in the actual structure of the object. So submarines actually have tanks which can either be filled with air or water or a combination of the two. And the way that we can then use that is as we fill it with water, then we're going to increase the weight, so the force acting down. So that means it's going to float at a lower level in the actual water there. If we want it to be back on the surface, then what we do is we pump air into those tanks, we force the water out, and therefore the weight is reduced, it will float higher up in the sea on the surface in that case. So make sure you can talk about how we can change the height at which these objects will float within water. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain why we have an upwards force on a floating object. 
and you can describe the factors that influence floating and sinking along with carrying out calculations about the depth at which they would float at.